alongside Eric Horn, I'm Dave Morris here in the Oklahoma's video studio a few hours after the Thunder in Utah played on the road. Our Maddie Lee was there. She uh, caught some post-game footage of Russell Westbrook because he was the big story, or one of the big stories out of last night's game, an altercation that he got into with a courtside fan. Let's start there. What do we know about that? Well, you know, going back and forth, uh, Russell Westbrook does like to go back and forth with fans. Most of the time it's healthy. Uh, you can hear it during the games if you're sitting down there close enough. Uh, this time it wasn't. You know, it, it escalated to a point where Westbrook took offense to some of the things that this fan said. Westbrook, Patterson, uh, Patrick Patterson, and Raymond Felton all alleged that this fan said, get on your knees like you're used to. Um, and that was something that Russell Westbrook took offense with. Russell Westbrook was caught on video saying that he would F up said fan and his wife. Um, and obviously that's not something that you could say either. But, uh, you know, this, it was kind of a back and forth, uh, he said, he said kind of situation after the game. And, uh, you know, Russell Westbrook made a statement after the game saying, look, he stands by what he did um, and he would do it again because uh, he doesn't stand for fans uh, crossing that line. A lot to unpack here in, in everything you just said. On NewsOK.com, you can, you can see Russell Westbrook's full statement. I'm going to start right there. You can also see that clip that was captured and bantered around Twitter plenty last night of, of Westbrook talking with someone off camera. Um, obviously, uh, everybody's talking about the same video, but the realization of it is, is how it started was a um, young, young man and his wife in the stands told me uh, to get in on my knees like he used to. And for me, that's just completely disrespectful uh, to me. Um, I think it's racial. Um, I think it's just inappropriate in a sense of um, there's no protection for the players. Uh, I think there are, there are a lot of great fans in, around the world that like to come to the game and enjoy the game. And there are people that come to the game and to say mean, disrespectful thing about me, my family. Um, for many years, man, I, I've done all the right things. I've never done anything to hurt or harm anybody. Um, I've never been in any trouble. Uh, never fought a fan. Um, been in the league 11 years. Clean slate. Humble. Uh, I take whatever, all the criticism from everybody. I've been doing the same thing for years. Um, and for me, uh, disrespect will not be taken from me. Um, I can, I'm completely uh, just sit back some time and just take it like that. that's just one video but throughout the whole game throughout the whole, since, since I've been here especially here in Utah every time I come here it's a lot of disrespectful things I said and uh, for me I'm, I'm just not going to continue to take uh, the disrespect uh, for my family uh, I just think that there's got to be something done there's got to be some consequences for those type of people uh, that come to the game just to say and do uh, whatever they want to say and um I don't think it's fair uh, to the players, not just to me, but I, I don't think it's fair to the players. Um, and if I had to do it over again, I would say the same exact thing because I, I truly um, will stand up for myself, for my family, for my kids, for my wife, for my mom, for my dad every single time. Um, I expect anybody else to do the same. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at with the whole situation. Um, as for <clears throat> beating up his wife, I, I've never put my hand on a woman. I never will. Um, never been in any domestic violence uh, before, never have before, but once he said the comment, his wife repeated it, the same thing to me as well. So that's kind of how that started. I know you guys only got the tail end of the video, but to start of the video um, is way more important and way more disrespectful than what you guys heard. So appreciate y'all. Well, let's talk about Westbrook's statement and the fact that he owned up to a scenario and said, I said this, here's why I said this. Furthermore, I said this about the woman. I would never hit a woman, but in context of this conversation, right. here's what I meant, which was kind of refreshing for me, Russell Westbrook, to hear, here's why this happened from my perspective. Yeah, and, and Westbrook also claimed that he felt it was racist what this man said or in what this woman repeated from what her husband said. And look, it doesn't matter what people from the outside interpret it as. If they interpret uh, what this guy said as him being able to say it as his right as a fan, him being able to do that 
as somebody who's at the game and paid money to get into the game. What matters is how Russell Westbrook interprets it because he's the one receiving that banter. And if he feels that it's racist, then it's racist. So um, Russell Westbrook justified what he did through that. Uh, his teammates stood by him. Raymond Felton was very articulate about saying, look, we get yelled all kinds of stuff about our families and people all the time, and there's no consequences for these fans, but then we get fined. Uh, he stood by Russell Westbrook's integrity and his character as a guy who's known him for many years in the league and a guy who's played with him for two years. So you had a lot of backing of Russell Westbrook last night, not just from Thunder players, guys on social media. Uh, Donovan Mitchell of the Utah Jazz put out a statement earlier today saying that he was going to work on you know racism and uh, he and his teammates are going to work on kind of you know trying to figure out some of the issues that plague uh, not just you know the Jazz in particular and their fan base because this isn't the first time that something like this has happened according to Mitchell but just basically in all of sports so it's a very hot topic right now it's one that's very sensitive and Russell Westbrook's at the head of it as a guy who felt like you know he had his integrity attacked last night by this fan. You mentioned Raymond Felton, uh, Matty Lee also has that. Trying to find that defensive identity without Felton. Do you feel like you got there as a team tonight? Rebound and just, you know, playing as a unit defensively. Offense will speak for itself. You know, many guys are so many guys. You know, defense, our defense is on that level. They're a tough team to score against from a point guard's perspective. What do you see that Russ and yeah, Dennis are going to take advantage of tonight? Uh, really just get us out of pain. So we actually took over the defense. What was your viewpoint of, of what happened with Russ and the fan? What did you see? Ooh, that's, that's a tough subject, man. I'm going I'm to I'm speak on this, and I want everybody here to really tune into this and really understand. Like, at the end of the day, we human beings, you know, we have feelings. Just like they got feelings, we have feelings too. That was absurd what they said to us. And that's not fair, that's not right. This ain't the first game that's happened. It happened in Portland. It happened pretty much in every arena we go to. They're always picking on us. And um, it's, it's just not right, man. It's, it's not fair to tell a man to get on his knees. That's what you're used to doing. And then turn around, his wife reiterates it and says it right back to him again. It's not right. You know, then everybody want to make a big idea of what he said, but let's talk about what they said to him first. He's not coming off and talking to the fans, just saying stuff to him, just blurting out words. He's not. You know, they're coming at him first. When is it going to be a point when it's going to be protecting us players? You know, people can say whatever they want to say to us during games and yell out stuff and talk about our families, talk about our kids, and like our kids. You know, you know, we 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 are fathers and. You know, we have families and people can just blur out what they want to say about us and that's, that's just not fair. That's not right. You know, so when is it going to be a point where it's going to be about protecting us players? You know, because as soon as we respond and we say something in the heat of the moment, yeah, sometimes you may say something and it's not the appropriate thing to say at the time. You know, but when you're in the heat of a moment in a game or you, you blocked out or playing and somebody blocks out something disrespectful to you, you know, sometimes you respond. We're human. We respond in the wrong way and say the wrong words and... Yeah, you think about it later, but in the moment, you don't care because you're mad. You're upset because somebody just disrespected you as a man. And that's not right. You know what I'm saying? So when is it going to be about us? When is it going to be about the players? You know, that's what they say. It's about protecting the players. We have this security. The security was standing right there. He never said one thing. He didn't say one word. He looked at the, the people and turned around. Nothing was said. And that's not right. So as soon as rest goes off, now all of a sudden, all the security want to come. Everybody want to come and say something. You know, now they want to post it and put it all on the internet and stuff to make him out of a bad person. Now, listen, man, I've been around this guy 14 years of my career. Not 14, but since he's been in the league, 10 years. And I've been playing with him for the last two. I know him personally. He's like a brother. He's not that type of guy. They're trying to make him out to be this bad guy. You know, all that stuff fans. Not one time as he came off and just went at a fan coming off the court or sitting on the sideline. And not one time. I've heard pretty much everything that people say to him. It's not right. And it comes with the game. That's fine. People talk junk in the game, but we can go back at each other. But when you get fans coming in and they talking crazy, they saying stuff to us, 
It's not right, man. What would you like? Uh, sorry, what, what would you like to see for, to for those fans? What would you like to see? I'd like to see the NBA do something. Like when we go, when we retaliate, we get fined. You know, we get fined all this money and stuff, and get stuff taken with us. Some guys get suspended. You know, things are done to us when we respond back to what people say to us. So when is it going to be a penalized to them? You know, that's all I'm saying. Okay. Like I mean, I get it. Sometimes some words are wrong. Some things you say is wrong. I'm not taking that away. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is, when is it going to be about protecting us as players? And it's just not right for us to have to deal with that when they said something to him first and they said something totally disrespectful. I heard it. I'm standing right there. I heard it. And that's not right. That's all I'm saying. That's not right. From last night in the locker room, Raymond Feldman addressing the situation. Shane Kiesel, if I'm saying that name right, Shane Kiesel, Shane Kiesel, he is the alleged fan mm -hmm. in this incident. He gave a statement to one of the Salt Lake uh, TV stations, I believe it was KSL last night, and what do we hear from him? Well, he says that he said something different. He said that he told Westbrook to go ice his knees. Um, there are some reports out there from fans that, or at least one fan out there that said that he had multiple sources that said that uh, Kiesel's story is accurate. Look, it's gonna be a he said, she said, side by side thing. Um, the matter is that sometimes fans cross the line. Um, the matter is that you know, Westbrook does this quite frequently with fans, but I've never seen it to where he was this incensed in any situation with a fan and what they said. So clearly something was either said or heard by Westbrook and the people on the Thunder bench that they did not agree with. So whether Kissel said what uh, he said or not, um, something came off wrong and it would take a lot in my opinion, just being around Russell Westbrook and seeing him interact with fans the way he has on the road before, it would take a lot for him to get to the state that he was at last night. If you don't subscribe to the Thunder Buddies podcast, well, what I don't know what doing? you're waiting what for. What are you, you doing? You certainly should. Uh, you and Maddie late night last night, because it was a late game to begin with, broke this down in some detail. I want to say it's a 45-minute podcast, and the first half dives into this issue of, of fans interacting with players. So feel free to subscribe to the Thunder Buddies podcast. It's not going to cost you anything. It's, it's free. for free, and it comes directly to your device wherever you find your podcasts. But Eric, what I want to ask you about is you are at every game, or mm -hmm. most every game, home certainly, road, most of those. Westbrook is a player who interacts with fans, but the NBA is kind of a sport where, for better or worse, fans interact with players a lot. What's that dynamic like? It, you know, it, because I should also say this, in most places, you're right there courtside in between fans and players. It's a fine line. And like I said, usually it doesn't get crossed. Westbrook will exchange a couple words with a fan. The fan will exchange some words with him. The people around the fans in Westbrook will laugh about it. And then they'll just kind of go about their business. It's usually a pretty cordial kind of thing. It's, it, it's kind of fun. Somebody will talk about his shooting or his free throws or something that has to do with the game. And I think that was what the problem was last night. The alleged comments were not about the game. Because while he did have bags on his yes, on his he did knees, have bags on his knees. Whether those were ice salt or whatever, it was yeah. a, it was a treatment. Yeah, and and he said I think that the back and forth was according to Kessel was. Um, he said, go put ice on your knees or go ice your knees. And Westbrook said it was heat. Yeah, heat, um, not salt, heat. Yeah, that's yeah right. and I don't, I don't that, know exactly details. what was said. It, 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 they're important details uh, from, his, from his account of the story. Well, what, what was hap what's said next, that's important details for sure. Yeah, and we don't know because Kessel didn't, uh, naturally didn't say that on the broadcast that he said the words that were alleged by three of the Thunder players. So... What usually happens is Westbrook just has a calm time about it. They kind of go back and forth with fans, and then the thing just kind of dissipates and goes out on its own. Um, I will say this. Look, after the game, even after all those incidents, on the way out of the stadium uh, of, of a place where that has been very hostile to Russell Westbrook, he takes off his shoes and he gives them to some, some kids in the stands. He gives high fives to kids in the stands. Uh, granted, they had Thunder jerseys on. But he, um, <laughs> he made a point to seek out children in the stands, even after the game, and give his shoes away. He didn't storm off in an outrage. He made that time to make those interactions with fans. So I do think that this is an isolated incident. I do think that something was said to provoke Westbrook to say those things. It's not right what he said. But it is a special incident because most of the time this does not happen with Russell Westbrook. 
Also diving into some of the dynamics here, uh, Utah kind of has a reputation uh, of being a rough place, mm -hmm. uh, fan versus player. I think Kevin Durant didn't, didn't like and perhaps still doesn't like playing in Utah. But Utah also has something called cards that they hand out to fans if you're unruly. What is that about? Well, it's supposed to be a warning, uh, so to speak. And there's your warning. There's there's your warning. It's a card. <laughs> yeah, they, they they hand out these cards to fans. That's kind of like a a warning for um for security. And it says that if you're, you know, if, if if you get unruly or something like that, here's your warning. And apparently five of those were handed out to fans, various fans, last night. But they were allowed to stay in the arena once those were handed out. So Do, does Oklahoma City have a policy like that? I am not sure. Okay. I'm not entirely sure about that. But um, there are code of conduct um, laws that are accessible to everybody out there. I think they're accessible to, te to all the fans on game day. Uh, they might even be in the brochures that they hand out on game day. So this is the stuff that fans don't know. They know that they're not supposed to go in on, on players, as was alleged last night. Uh, there's certain things that are off limits. Um, and if true, uh, this fan did cross the limit. One last thing, uh, arenas have arena security, there's local police, yeah. but then teams also have their own security that travels with the team, correct? Yeah, yeah, I mean, the Thunder has security guys that are always around the players, um, always in, in like with them on the bus and stuff like that. You know, we've seen incidents, incidents where, you know, fans have confronted Russell Westbrook on the court in recent seasons. You know, this year he had a young fan mm -hmm. grab a guy, grab Russell Westbrook, and he I thought he handled that fairly well. Yeah, he went into full-on parenting mode right now. Yeah, there. yeah, he, he handled that pretty easily. But then last year there's a game winner in Detroit, and a fan on the floor gets in Russell Westbrook's face and yells. And Russell Westbrook has to push him back because the fan is right here in his face. And the security promptly took him and basically kicked him in the ass a few times and <laughs> sent, him down the, uh, sent him down the tunnel. But uh, I saw it from afar. It was incredible. They pushed him up the tunnel. I don't know what happened when he got there. They might have roughed him up or something. But it was incredible. They took care of that very quickly. But it's up to arena security to handle fans and the profanity or the inappropriate language or behavior, that's up to arena security. That's not up to Thunder security. Um, now, if a fan were to come out of the stands and you know come around a player, then arena, then, then the Thunder security would probably get in there. But frankly, it's up to arena security. And from what I understand, just look, just uh, listening to Raymond Felton last night, the arena security wasn't doing anything when it came to this interaction. They were kind of just letting it go, and. It's kind of a fine line to cross because these guys are talking normally for one minute, mm -hmm. and then the next thing you know, somebody might not like something that somebody else says, and it turns really instantly. One last question for you. I guess looking forward, what might we be expecting both uh, as what Westbrook, as any sort of fine suspension conversation, and NBA, any sort of policy changes? Probably too early to be talking that, but... It's possible. Um, look. The NBA is evaluating it right now. Uh, the Utah Jazz they say, said that they were going to investigate last night. That's probably still ongoing on both sides. But you know, the last time Russell Westbrook had an interaction at a Jazz game was in the playoffs. He actually made contact with a fan as a fan was trying to put a camera in his face after a game. Uh, and Westbrook kind of slapped away at the camera. And he wasn't fine for that. So if he makes contact with someone and isn't fined, and the league just kind of swept that under the rug, I'm curious to see as if this verbal thing, even though it was caught on film, um, I'm curious to see if whether or not he's going to get fined for that or not. I, he may not. Um, and the fan, uh, I, I imagine the fan might get some kind of repercussion too, but it would have to be, to me, a balance. It would have to be if Russell Westbrook gets a minor fine, the fan would have to get a ban for a certain amount of games or possibly a lifetime ban, um, because they both did wrong. Uh, I think the fan crossed the line first, but Russell Westbrook shouldn't have reacted the way that he did. Plenty of coverage can be found on our website, newsok.com. Our columnist Barry Trammell uh, wrote something this morning uh, citing with Westbrook in this side of the things as far as the fan going too far. You can read that online at newsok.com. Plenty of coverage every day in the Oklahoman. And as I mentioned, check out that Thunder Buddies podcast. It is well done, and I appreciate you guys knocking that out late night, early morning, religiously. He's Eric Horn. Follow him on social media and on Twitter and, so, and Facebook and News OK in the Oklahoma. I'll shut up now. Thanks, Eric, for your time. Thank you.